coming into this game, what did you know about L LIU? Um, I guess did they did they do what you expected them to do? Uh, well, I'll start it off. Uh, nah, we knew that they were a very good team. We knew that they crashed the offensive boards really hard, and uh, especially in the second half, we found that out uh, the hard way. But um, and we also knew that they were going to come out really fired up on their home court, come out running, which they did. And, uh, you know, they're a very good team over there. They were talking about how they wanted to crowd Michael early in the game. But what did you guys do to, you know, kind of adapt to that? And obviously got a little frustrated earlier with a few travels and whatnot, but how did you adapt uh, first half? Uh, well, I think the big thing was we were at our best in that first half when we were running. Uh, and that, you know, that took a little bit of pressure off of Mike, uh, not having to make every play inside and things like that. And uh, that, that was a way for us to get easy buckets in that first half. Mike, just adapting to that. Uh, I, I just think pushing the ball in the transition uh, today really helped us a lot throughout the, throughout the second half. Um, I pretty much took myself out the game in the first half um, with, with, uh, with silly fouls and uh, And turnovers, lots of turnovers. Oh, and our our rookie job. Turnovers. Impressions of your team, Vice State games. <clears throat> I'm getting better and better. Um, kids are working really hard. They're picking up our system. They're sharing the ball really well. I think it's about the fourth game we've had 20 plus turn. I mean assists. Almost had that many turnovers too. <laughs> but uh, we're I just think we're growing as a team. And guys are getting used to each other a little bit. And we on a night where we didn't shoot the ball well, we were sloppy with it. Yeah and we found a way to win against a very good team. You talked about the ball movement uh, in the first half, in particular, you, know, you guys had you know, some you know, movement going real well. Yeah, I thought in the first half we really shared the ball well. In the second half, I think we just tried to, sometimes when you play fast, it's hard to get a team to understand when it becomes half court that you have to be a little more patient. And so I think what was happening is we pushed it up, we didn't get the initial break, and then we were trying to score off the first pass when the defense was set. And weren't being patient, of weren't getting ball reversals like we were getting in the first half. So I think it's just part of growing as a team, getting a little more mature. Talk about the impressions of uh, Glover. <laughs> uh, he's, not, he's not too bad. Uh, you know, Mike plays really hard. He's, he's been working very hard the last two weeks in particular, and I think his game is starting to show his work ethic. And um, I'm really happy and proud of him and the whole team and Scott for another game with 10 assists. And the whole, you know, there's always somebody for us that gives us a lift. And, you know, Glove has been really, really steady over the last three to four games and playing at a really high level. What about the combination, combination from uh, Machado to, to Glove? It's a nice combination. Yeah. You know, they look for each other well. They complement each other very well. Eight offensive rebounds for Mike. The big one that he chased down late in the game was huge. And he turned and went to, the, went to the basket from there. That was just a huge play. And, you know, it's something I think three to four weeks ago he wouldn't have made. He wouldn't have made those hustle plays. I think the first game or second game of the year, he had one rebound in one game, three rebounds in another in that first tournament that we had. And just kind of not playing with a fire and trying to play every possession. Now he's starting to play every possession. He's just, you know, the sky's the limit. The, the more his work ethic grows, the better he's going to become as a player. And he's really going in the right direction with it. What do you uh, attribute that to in terms of that transformation over that period? Um, honestly? Transformation is him deciding he wanted to work harder. I think losing those three games was a reality check to the whole team. I mean, we had a lot of guys out, so we didn't practice with the whole team before that first tournament. But I thought it was really a reality check to them. Like, listen, we're not going to just walk out in the court and win. You know, things coaches try to preach to the players. And when they lost the third game especially to Brian, I think it was like, wow, you know, guess what? We're not as good as we thought. We hung with two great teams early on, and then we just lost to Brian. It was a good team in their own right, but it should have been a game we should not have given away. And I think they all came back and the whole team got refocused and they met and had a meeting and we had meetings and they came out with a different attitude and they've been taking that forward. In terms of the first half, it seemed like he was a little <coughs> frustrated with uh, just crowding. They, they crowded him and helping off. The travels, four travels in the first half, is that a mechanical thing, a rough thing? Or it was half and half. Um, I'm going to tell you, I think he was a little over anxious to make right. plays. And, He's usually a little better when a double team comes and you know will you know, pass the ball. But I think he wanted this game sometimes to try to t tries to take more than he should on his own plate. He tries to make plays that aren't there. But I thought he calmed down as the game went along and 
you know, made opportunities for himself, not forced opportunities. So that was the difference. What is it like coaching up here? It's great. People are terrific. Talk, talk about the difference between. <laughs> I don't. Coaching to me is coaching. You know, I'm just fortunate to be in a great place where people really love basketball and, and great administration and love my coaching staff. I love the players here. I'm just. I, God, I'm blessed. God bless me to put me in another great opportunity. Is, was, is Glover one of the best players you ever coached? He's right up there. Yeah. He's right up there. And that, that will tell over a longer period of time. I couldn't say that after seven or eight games because it's not fair to the players I've coached right. in the past. What does his presence do for the rest of the players in the offense as far as opening things up? I think you just said it. I think it opens things up because he's going to require more than one player. Um, and so depending on who the double team is coming from, that's who it opened up. Like today, they got away with doubling a little bit more because we didn't knock down the shots that we normally knock down. But you know, it wasn't enough to, to beat us. Almost was, but it wasn't tonight. But it's given Kyle and JJ more opportunities. It's, I think it gives Alejo more opportunities, not just for getting passes, but to clean up the offensive boards because the guy's not in position to guard him all the time. And, you know, it helps Scott a lot, too, because the guy's afraid to leave. When Scott's driving the lane, they don't know, do we leave and go at Scott, and then it's going to be a dunk, or do we stay and give up a layup? You know, so it's a nice combination.